Interactions between a player and their environment is crucial for immersion. But one of the big challenges of trying to make all the, these interactions work is making your hands interact with the environment in a more realistic way. For example, when your hands press up against a wall, you wouldn't expect for your fingers to go through the wall, but rather you'd expect for them to sort of press into that wall and kind of bend down in order to fit in that spot. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can accomplish just that and allow for your hand, hand animation to be physical, allowing for your fingers to act a little bit more realistically when coming into contact with other objects in your scene. But before we go ahead and jump to that, if you enjoy this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so here's just a general guide to showing how this will work. You will obviously have some different results depending on your physics asset. Uh, for example, I, I seem to be having a bit of an issue with my pinky and maybe my ring finger uh, not going back all the way. Um, but if you do a little bit more modifications to your physics asset and things like that, then you should end up with a much better result than what uh, th than what I'm getting here with mine. My mine has a little bit of a mixed result here. But anyways, let me go ahead and show you how my hands look here. So as you can see, if I kind of move my hands around, uh, they, they kind of go a little bit stringy, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit loose. And if I just kind of let them sit there for a second, you can see they kind of start going back to a more natural position that, um, that, that you would usually expect. Um, you can also see too, uh, that they, I mean, they, they, for the most part, go back to their natural position. Um, we will, I, I will be showing you how you can modify some of the physical animation settings. Uh, you will have mixed results depending on how you set that up. I would definitely caution you against making your physical animation settings too large. I found if you do that, you tend to get pretty spazzy animations. So uh, definitely keep that in mind as you are going through. But um, anyways, th these are our hands. And I can also go ahead and like push them up against a, a surface like this, for example. And you can kind of see that our hands kind of they, they won't pass through, at least not all the way. Uh, our thumb is a little bit weird just because the way I set up that physics animation, it only goes back and forth that way. So that, in case you're curious about that thumb there. And if I try forcing my hand like all the way in, it'll kind of struggle to get in there. You'll probably get more of like a spazzy animation like you see here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, and then they can just kind of interact with the, uh, with the surface there. There we go. Come on. Yeah, and you can kind of see them interacting there. I, I think it's a little bit easier with my left hand. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you can see it kind of interacting there with the, uh, with the surface of the environment. So let me go ahead and jump in to the tutorial and I can show you guys exactly how all this gets set up and how you guys can do this for yourselves. Now, before we get too far into this video, I want to know one important thing about the setup for this tutorial. I'm going to be building off of a tutorial that I did a while back called the Hand Actor Collision. In that tutorial, I made two physical hands that would follow around the motion controllers loosely, so that way if they get stuck into a, hand, into a wall or some other physical object, your hand will actually get pushed back and not actually fully follow that motion controller like you would normally expect. The reason that we're doing this is in order for these physical animations to work, we need to be able to simulate physics on our hands. Problem is that if we do this and we are not following some simple steps like we do in the hand actor collision video, our hands are simply going to fall to the ground and become more limp. Since we want our hands to still be able to follow our motion controllers, we obviously want to make sure that our hands can simulate physics and that it will still continue to fall around. So I'm gonna be building off of that video and I'll be using all the actors that I did in that video as well. So if you haven't gone and checked out that video, I'll have a link to it up here in the top right so that way you can go ahead and check that out. First, let's have a look at our skeletal mesh hands. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the mannequin hands that you see right here. We're going to wanna make sure that our physics asset is properly set up in order for our fingers to be able to interact with the environment. By default, your hands probably aren't going to look just like mine do in the physics asset, and that's because I've already done some prep work in order to get this tutorial started. But I'm going to go and show you exactly how you can modify your physics asset to make yours look a little bit more like mine. Start by making sure you can see your bones over here on the left-hand side. This is gonna make the whole process much easier as you're following along, so I just 
think that this is a very good step to follow. Then for each bone that you want to interact with the collision and that you want to make bend, you're going to want to click add and then whatever shape you want to use. I'm going to use cylinders because I like this for fingers and I think that they're a little bit closer to the natural shape of fingers. Go ahead and size this to the section of your finger that you are currently working on that the bone is currently attached to as well. And then as you're adding each in, you also need to add in a constraint. I'm going to do this in between adding our physics shapes in order to make sure that all of our constraints are in place as we are going along. To do this, right click on whatever the parent shape is of the one you're currently working on, then mouse over the constraints and click on the physics shape that you are currently working on so that way you can constrain that shape. To modify this constraint, go ahead and head to the details panel while the constraint is still selected and make sure that linear limits are locked in all directions. And for angular limits, we only want our finger to be able to rotate in one axis. So you're going to need to locate whatever axis this is and set it to limited. If you like to modify how far your finger is allowed to bend, you can modify the limit of whatever sw swing that you currently limited. I'm just gonna leave mine as standard just to keep this tutorial nice and simple, but you are certainly allowed to modify that further on if you would like. Once you have all your constraints and shapes in place, we can move on to the next part, which is moving our fingers on collisions. To do this, go ahead and open up the collision hands. Like I said, if you didn't see this, I did this in the hand actor collision tutorial. Then once in the actor, I'm going to first make sure that physics is simulating on each of our skeletal mesh hands. Then after that, I'm going to add in two physical animation components. One of these will be for each of our hands. We won't need to do anything to these components in the viewport, but I do want to note that Unreal Engine will give a warning saying that these are experimental classes, so take with that what you will. Then once we have all that in place, we can move on to the event graph. And here we're going to need to add in the begin play if you don't have one already. Then we will grab each of our physical animation components along with the skeletal mesh components. Then for each of our physical animation components, we're going to need to set skeletal mesh component and pass through the corresponding skeletal mesh that we grabbed. Once we have both of our skeletal mesh components set for each of our physical animation components, then we need to apply physical animation settings below. If you have different hands, you may need to call this twice, one for each of your individual hands, but since each of my hands use the same skeletal mesh and same skeleton, I can pass both physical animation components into this one node The body name here is going to depend on your skeleton. If we look at mine, we can actually see that my root bone is called hand underscore R. So that's the bone that I'm going to use in order to modify all bones below that one. After we've put in our bone into our node here, we can go ahead and make physical animation data. This is going to alter how our bones try to return to their natural positions. Since we're only dealing with angular constraints in this example, you may not need to alter all of these values. The ones I found most useful for the mannequin hands are orientation and angular velocity strength. So I'm going to set each of these values to 1000. The final option in our physical animation settings is include self. 
Now, I found for the mannequin hands that this is really optional since this doesn't have any effect on our mannequin hands themselves, but if you're using a different skeleton or a different mesh, you may find that you have different results. So I'm going to just go and leave this as is, and that is all that we need to do for our and with that, our hands are all set up and they are now able to interact with your virtual environment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. I also want to give a quick shout to my Patreon supporters who you should see somewhere over here on the right hand side. With that, I'll see you in the next reality.